Hi, this is Karen Teeley with a quick tutorial for getting started using breakout rooms in Adobe Connect. You've probably wondered what's all the hype about the breakout rooms and why would you want to try them? At first glance, they look a little confusing and they might take too much time to learn. So I'm going to explain the hows and the whys of breakout rooms and you'll be a pro in no time. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is just think. Ask yourself, what do you want your learner to do? How are you going to bridge the gap between what they've read about and how will they apply learning in the real world? How can I structure a space for practicing new skills? Breakout rooms are great places for practicing new skills. Just to name a few examples, applying critical thinking to case studies, practicing interview skills, or practicing history taking skills, solving scenario problems, or just brainstorming for ideas. In the message board below, share some of your application ideas. How do you use breakout rooms in your class? Once you have decided on the learning activity, it's time to set it up in Adobe Connect. This takes a little planning as the breakout rooms must be set up beforehand. This visual assumes that you already have your room established and are adding a breakout room activity. So start by clicking on the breakout room view in the attendee pod. This is the large X in the middle of the three boxes. So now you're in your breakout room view. There are three rooms by default in Adobe Connect, but you can decide how many rooms you're going to need and add more if needed. Next, you'll want to set up the actual room. And here's the tricky part. You have to actually enter the room to set it up. So you will click on your name in the attendee pod and select the breakout room you want to enter. But wait, before you start breakouts or add any more rooms, be aware that Adobe copies the room you're currently in as a default breakout room. So to save yourself some setup time, create your breakout room design in a new layout, which I have already done over here on the right where it says BO Breakout Layout. Go to that layout and then click Add the New Breakout Room. So I'm going to go into the, my, my breakout layout. This is just a template. And now I'm going to add a new breakout room. And now I'm going to start my breakouts. And so you'll be able to see, if I go to breakout room 6, that that copied over the um, copied over the breakout room layout but it didn't copy over my notes because you have to put the notes in when you're in the breakout room but this is a great way to get a head start on some of the design so but if you skip this step no worries you can build the breakout room any way you want once you're inside here so now we're inside the breakout rooms so I'm going to show you how to set up a room I using a scenario to practice conflict management skills for a leadership course so it's important that the learners see the activity directions in the room itself. So I create a reusable PowerPoint slide with standard directions and put that in a share pod. So this is what's on the top. Let me go to breakout room four because I had that all set up with the notes written in there. So but you can move yourself around from room to room and set them up according to how you need them. And so each room can look different or as I mentioned, it can look the same. But let me go back to breakout room four because that's the one I want to show you that I'm working. So again, I use a notepad, see at the bottom here, to write up the specific scenario. And um, I include, as I mentioned, you can include the same or different directions in each room depending on your learning goals. So for this exercise, I set up a different conflict management style for each of the five different rooms. Be sure to instruct your students to write their notes on this pod by using the text tools. Uh, this will be what is shared with the whole group later. So if they don't write on here, then you, they'll have nothing to share when you bring them back to share with the whole group. Also, this is very important. Remember to change uh, to label the note pod to make it easier to retrieve. So to change the label on the top of the note pod, you double click on it and then write in whatever it is that you want it to be. So this one is the collaborate um, notepad for my conflict exercise. And it, by default, it will, um, 
it will label the breakout room itself, make it easier to find. But again, and I'll show you later, you'll see that by labeling your note pods, you'll be able to find them much quicker. So if you didn't use the layout, uh, um, my, uh, the layout style to create your different rooms, this is the time that you go into each room and set them up according to the way you want them. So as I mentioned, you can move yourself from room to room and redesign them. I'm not going to redesign them here, but that's uh, what you would do when you were um, setting them up. When you finished all your room setup, the breakout rooms are ready for your class. And when you're, when you're done with this, you click End Breakouts, and this will bring you back to the main room. It'll end the breakouts, and then you move yourself back to the main room, and your setup is ready to go for the students. Once the students are in the class, you can move them into the breakout rooms. By clicking on the breakout room view, only you as host can see the breakout room view. The students cannot see you move the names. They can only see the attendee view. So by this point, your phones are probably already merged. But if not, you'll need to make sure by looking for the little phone icon next to their name. If they're not merged, you'll see a phone number at the bottom of the attendee pod and you can merge them manually by dragging and dropping the number to match up the number with the name. If the phones are not merged, the students and their audios might be in different rooms. So please note that for this example, not all the names have little phones connected. But in your live class, you'll see the little phones in your attendee pod that look something like this. Now you're ready to move the students into breakout rooms using the, you can use the evenly distribute button distribute button which is up here next to the start breakouts and this evenly distributes the students into the different breakout rooms or you can manually move them so let me show you how to manually put students into breakout rooms if you hover your mouse over their name you can just slide them into the breakout rooms that you want to put them in and this way you can you know put people into groups that have been predetermined etc so once again, this example does not show, does not have a, very many students in it, and it's hard to see what the breakout rooms look like. But this is a screenshot, and your breakout room will look something like this when you have multiple students in, um, in the breakout rooms. So once you are ready, click the Start Breakout button, and voila, all of your students are in their breakout rooms working hard on that great activity that you designed. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to start the breakouts. And so now the students are in their breakout rooms, but you're in the main, you're in the main room because you didn't assign yourself to a breakout room. But you can go into each breakout room and check on the students. So let's go in to all right. So I'm going to check in on the group on the students. So you can slide yourself into the different breakout rooms um, to check on the students that are in there. So let's go in breakout room four and to see how the students are in there and to see if they have any questions. So this is a great way to participate in the breakout room activities or to just to check in on them and seeing what they're doing. I don't usually surprise them. I always announce my presence when I come in there. They can either see your name or if you're on video, they can see your video. But I don't eavesdrop. You know, I just check in and sometimes I stay just a couple of seconds. And if they have any questions, um, you know, I'm usually there to answer them. And also they can send you messages from the breakout rooms to let you know that they have any questions and then you can go into the breakout room to answer their questions if they have any. So when the time is up, just click on end breakouts and everyone will turn return back to the main room. Um, now you want to share the breakout rooms that, with all of the work that the students did with the whole group. So to find the breakout room pods, you will go to pods click breakout room. Let's find the breakout room pod from breakout room four. And you can see quickly that you can, you'll be glad to that you named it and you can find it uh, uh, quickly. Otherwise you have these generic chat eight, note four or whatever, and it's very difficult to find uh, your um, pod that you named. So we're going to be able to pull that up right away and find this is where the students work was done. So all of the students recorded notes are now viewable in post breakout. 
Another quicker way to access your breakout pods is to set up a post breakout layout ahead of time and put and then you can pull in the breakout knot pod ahead of time even before the students do it. You just link your layout to the post breakout pod just as I showed you just now, but instead you put it in a layout. So I did this in advance. So let me show you what it looks like. So you see on the right it says post breakout and I click on that and this brings up the pod that I made. Now you can either you can put multiple pods, breakout pods in one layout so that you can see several of them at the same time. It depends on how much room that you have. Sometimes I like it to be big because if you put too many of them it becomes too small and the students have difficulty seeing it. So that's it on sharing the um, post breakout pods. So just to recap how we approach the breakout rooms, we started by thinking about what activity will give the students a chance to practice new skills. Then we set up the rooms ahead of time. Once the students were in the class, we then put them into the breakout rooms using the breakout room view. And then we started the breakouts, giving the students plenty of time to complete the activity. You can start the breakouts from any layout you are in. Just be sure you're in the breakout room view, which is the middle box with a big X, which is the top arrow, and then by clicking on the start breakouts to get started. So once the students were done, we brought them back, all back to the main room by ending the breakouts. And we shared the work with the whole group by revealing the breakout note pods with the students' work. We did this either by going to the pods, the breakout pods shown on the screen here, or we made a post breakout layout in advance for a quick retrieval. So that's it. Getting started using breakout rooms. Not short but I hope sweet. Thanks for watching.